welcome to another tutorial video. So in today's tutorial we're going to be using some of the elements from kit number 63 which is the Delightful Daisies card creator and we're going to make this card. So it's basically um, a layered inked background kind of technique but we're actually going to create our mask that we're going to use from the dies that are in this month's kit. Then we're also using the inks and the stencil brush from this month's kit plus the glitter marker and the glitter nouveau drops as well. So we've got lots of different elements and we're also using the stamps too. So I've packed in quite a lot of the elements from this month's kit onto this card. The sentiment isn't from the kit, it's actually from this little Simply Sentiment set of stamps that I bought recently off the Tonic website, so this should still be available, um, and I'll link it below the video. But I'm going to give you a little quick introduction to what's in this month's craft kit. Don't forget, I do always do my full-on unboxing video of a Tonic craft kit as well, and there will be... Um, five different samples in that video, um, including three different ways of using the die that this kit actually um, cuts out. It's like a card creator, um, hence the, the name of the kit. So you've got a full bottle, um, the smaller size, because they've now got a larger size, the 60ml size of Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. You're getting um, a full spool of Baker's Twine. You're going to get a Nouveau Glitter Marker, which we're going to use in this tutorial. We're getting a bottle of Nouveau Glitter Drops, which we're also using in this tutorial. We're getting a full set of three blending ink pads um, that are the hybrid ink pads. So they'll work great for stamping and using watercolour, stamping and using your alcohol pens, or you can also blend them with the Nouveau brushes as well. And this is the Woodland Walk set. Then we're also getting one of the Precision Blending Brushes as well. I'm not sure if everybody's getting the same size. Um, it might just be one of the four from the smaller mixed pack of brushes, but I've got this one to work with and this will be perfect for uh, what we're going to do for this video. Then you're also getting the next binder, so you've got another binder to store all your kits in. And then this is the die set, which has the creator die to create um, the beautiful card blank, which can be used as a gatefold card, a half cut front sort of shaped card and also an easel card as well and I'll show you all three of them in my kit unboxing video but for this video we're going to be focusing on this die here which is one of the half cut dies that you can use to cut into or um, cut and stick on top of your actual main card creator die but we're going to use it individually and we're going to cut it twice opposite each other to create a whole like mandala sort of um, mask that we can use to ink blend through. You do also get a stamp set which we are using some of the stamps from. I've already got them on acrylic blocks ready. I have also got the sticker to show you, Delightful Daisies. Um, and you're also getting multiple sheets of cardstock. I think there's seven. You've got chocolate, clementine, amber, fern and marigold in the textured Craft Perfect cardstock. You've got majestic gold, pearlescent, gold dust glitter card and seafoam green iridescent mirror card. Um, and then this is what the actual die cuts out. This is the main part of the kit, so it creates a card that you can do all sorts of different things with. It, it's got a score line here for you and it's got this score line here, but you don't have to score them in either of those places if you don't want to. You can just use this um, as sort of a template for creating all sorts of different designs. As I said, I've made it into an easel card, a gatefold card, and also like a a half fronted card so I've literally just folded it down this main fold line and had this portion sort of missing of the front of my card as well um, and it's a lovely sort of small A2 kind of sized card as well. So that is everything that comes in this month's Tonic Craft Kit. I'll just move this out of the way and then we'll crack on with the tutorial. Okay, so as I said earlier, this is the card that we're going to create. So I'm going to show you exactly how to make all of the elements that we're going to need to be able to make this card and then how to actually make the sort of background of the card as well. And don't think you have to just stick to the colours of the kit. You can use any colours with this and it will look really lovely. This just gives a gorgeous autumn-y kind of theme to it. Um, but definitely brighter, bolder colours will give you a different look. Or actually, blues might even make this look a little bit snowflakey as well. So it could even go for a Christmas card too. So first of all, we need our mask or stencil. I think it's technically called a mask because it um, you tend to ink the negative spaces, if you know what I mean. So I think it's called a mask really. But first of all, we're going to tape this die 
to a piece of white card. Now this die has a cutting edge but this edge is missing along here so it's only going to half cut because that would work perfectly in the actual card creator die and you even have these notches in the die so that you can line it up perfectly with the base die to get it perfectly in position but for this we're just going rogue and we're going to tape that onto there bring our tangerine in and die cut the first side then we can poke out all of the pieces from our die and our die cut as well and you can see it's just the half cut so there's so many different ideas that you can do with this kind of like a half cut die you also actually have in the die set um, a solid version of this that's smaller so you can cut a solid one and put it behind to colour all of this in instantly as well which I think is fantastic and you don't always get that in die sets so I think that's really really lovely and then if we poke all of the pieces out just to make sure the die is going to cut really well the next time it just saves a little bit of time poking the pieces out will save you time uh, when it comes to removing the pieces from your actual die cut so now we want to take this other half of it and line it up and if you look at the die you can see the cut line goes right up to that edge it's right up to the edge so you know that you can line that edge up with that cut line that's already there and you're gonna pretty much get the whole thing to cut out we can adjust it and snip it out if it doesn't quite fall out but you can pretty much if you're good with your lining up you can pretty much get it all to cut in one go so let's just go I'm going to run it forwards and backwards uh, mainly because it's on that side of the plate but also because I'm using 300 GSM cardstock and because I, I want this as a stencil I want it to be very well cut so that you're going to get a really nice crisp um, impression when you stencil through it so we can then see it's come out on that side we got oh we got it lined up perfectly both sides I didn't on the one that I cut before so I'm actually really pleased that that worked out well for the demo so you can see here it's cut perfectly on both sides now I know there is a slightly wider gap in the middle than on the actual uh, you know repeat of that design on there if you wanted that to be more perfect you know less of a gap then you just got to move the dies closer together but I didn't mind that it had a little bit of a bigger gap and especially when you're ink blending through it you really don't notice so you can move our tangerine then we're going to get our piece of cardstock and we're going to have our mask then we're going to go in with our Nouveau blending brush. Now you only get one brush in this kit so I'm going to show you how you can go from colour to colour. I'm going to go in the order of um, green, then yellow, then brown. I think that's the least contaminate kind of way because the green is slightly lighter than the yellow. So the colours are pistachio green, amber ochre and soft suede which are from the Woodland Walk set of three ink pads. So firstly we're going to go in with the pistachio green and we're going to load up our ink blending brush, hold our stencil down or a mask down and ink over it. Now mine is a little bit brown just to begin with because I've still got a little bit of soft suede on my brush because I've, obviously I've already done um, this background once so I've gone from the green to the yellow. Um, but I still don't think it matters. I think it gives a nice difference to it um, if you do have a tiny little interference from different colours. So I don't think it really matters too much. And this background is going to be so busy anyway, I don't think anybody will really notice either. So we're going to go with this design. And when you're inking this, you want to try and get in all of the little areas, but also over the edge because this is a mask you're not going to have that defined edge whereas if it was a stencil you wouldn't really want to go over the edge because it's usually like a straight line for a stencil but when you've created a mask you want to go over the edge because then you get the actual impression and I think this shape would work fantastically on your jelly plate as well um, and saying that if you have um, a Nouveau Sparkle Spray or Mica Mist from a previous kit, you can also spray over them as well and it looks fantastic. This is my leftover mask from the ink blending with the Sparkle Spray on, so I can use that as another piece. And I also have this background done as well. 
with the beautiful design on but this could also have been a jelly print on here and you could if you wanted to even just rotate that slightly and stick it back on the same card use one of the circular elements from the die cut set to um, go over the top of it as well but this the sparkle spray isn't in your kit but we have had this colour in a kit before it's the apple spritzer colour uh, where did I put mine here I had um, added it to an old spray bottle and diluted it so it's a little bit more um, well like less concentrated less sparkly and I sprayed through it with that but this is or was one that I got from a kit and I just tipped it into here and diluted it with a bit of extra water but so if you do have one of those then it works really nicely for that kind of technique as well but we'll carry on with our ink blending so we're going to want to add another one of these on so we're just holding our stencil down. You can use your um, media grip mat underneath this as well if you want to as you're working. You can work on your magnetic platform. You can work on the base platform of your um, tonic stamping platform if you want to as well. Or any of your stamping platforms that you might have that have that magnetic capability. You can always do that to hold everything into position. But I don't really mind just um, holding it and ink blending. And I'm going to do one more partial piece over here. Because this is a small brush, you are having to like go back and reload it with ink quite regularly. But I still think um, you can still do these kind of effects if you only have smaller brushes. So don't think that you need larger brushes or for techniques that require um, small brushes. You can still do them with larger brushes. It's just nice to have a range of different uh, size brushes in your stash so that you've got the perfect one there for the perfect job. But you know this will work for all sorts of different techniques that you might want to do. I think I'm going to add a tiny bit more up here just to get that sort of green pistachio colour all over the background. So we're going to use this exact same mask and we're just going to place it in different positions. So because this bit is solid in the centre we've got quite a large white open space so I'm going to place that over there and come in with the amber ochre and ink blend that over the top. This is a slightly brighter and more impactful colour so it's going to be more prominent than the pistachio so we don't have to be as heavy handed with it if we don't want to and you also don't have to ink the whole of it either you can just leave it as a portion of it because it's just going to fill in white areas and add a bit of pattern to it but it doesn't necessarily have to be the entire pattern which is nice and then maybe a little bit more over here then a little bit up here perhaps and you literally can do this however you like you don't have to follow exactly where I'm placing it you can go with whatever you like if you would prefer that it was all lined up and maybe you drew some pencil lines first to make sure they're all in a perfect position then you can definitely do that as well whatever way works for you for creating a background I'm just kind of giving you the idea of being able to use these dies to create your own little mask to use um, I just think it works so well and this design is absolutely beautiful and I love that we got the inks in this month's kit as well because it meant that I could do a technique like this and we have everything we need to be able to create this card within the kit which is really nice. So one more little bit of yellow there, then I'm going to go in with the soft suede which is the brown colour and this is going to be more of our focal kind of design. So whereas with this we've gone all over the place, we kind of want to see where our eye wants to be drawn to. So on a card, um, as I've said in previous videos, I like to sort of put my sentiment within on this kind of like top third line or in, if I was doing a circle somewhere like this. However, for this card I want to use that little strip sentiment and have the other sentiment inside this design off to the side. So I'm going to leave this space free because I know I want to put my other sentiment there but I can put this piece on here and know that I'm going to stamp my sentiment into that open area that's going to be in there because I'm going to use the brown ink to stamp that sentiment as well. So. Be a little bit more careful with holding down your stencil this time. It didn't matter too much if we budged it a little bit in the background because it's lighter colours and everything's overlapping. But when you're going in with a darker colour, you kind of want to really make sure you're holding that stencil in one position so you don't move it around and get a double image or you know lose a bit of the design as well. And for this one as well, I am going to go over the edges but not necessarily in every single area and I'm going to try and be a little bit lighter handed as well because um, the brown is more likely to give you like 
harsher marks from your brush because it's not quite such a light colour um, you're more likely to get like a blobby harsh mark especially if you're sort of working quickly tapping back onto your ink pad you might get a lot of ink in one place on your brush but it will look fantastic however you do it I'm absolutely sure of that and you could even use a glacier paste a nouveau mousse or something through this stencil as well and then you'd have a beautiful die cut afterwards too then once we've got our main focal brown design in there I want to balance this just a little bit so I'm actually going to use a portion of this and instead of coming in from this side and doing a portion I'm thinking I might come in from this side and just do a small portion of it down here just for a little bit of a different look And then when I do it up here, I think I will come in from the outside edge to do it. So it gives a little bit of a different look all over the card. And there we go, we've got our balanced sort of brown elements on there as well. Now we've done our ink blending using the brush from the kit and our die cut. We can now do a little bit of stamping, so I'm going to come in with the little branch stamp that's in the stamp set and the pistachio green. And I'm gonna. this is going to be really subtle because this green is such a light colour, but I'm just going to add a few branches in a few different areas just to keep like adding to that beautiful layered up detail of the background. It kind of just gives like a different dimension to it and adds an extra bit of detail. So we're going to add that in a few places. Then... I want to add some yellow stamping because I've done the blending with the yellow as well. So we're going to bring the amber in and one of these corner pieces and we're just going to randomly stamp the corner. So it doesn't have to be in a corner, it can just be absolutely random because we've got so much other stuff going on. You're not really going to see that this is a corner stamp and then be like, huh, why did they stamp a corner stamp right in the middle of their card? But you can't tell it's a corner stamp. If you look at that, it just looks like it's um, a, like a partial of a background stamp. It really doesn't look like a corner stamp. And you can stamp bits of it as well and another bit up there too to give a different sort of look as well. Then we're going to come in with one of the sentiments. So I've chosen the Hello Friend sentiment, but you also have the one that says... What does the other one say? Thanks a bunch, the other one says. Uh, but I went for Hello Friend on this card. And I'm just going to take that sentiment and I'm going to stamp it in the centre of this flower because I want that to be a focal kind of point on the card but then I also want to balance this across the card so I'm going to stamp it in a couple of other areas as well just to sort of balance that kind of like beautiful scripty design across the card and sort of bring that brown across the card as well so we've got a lovely beautiful balanced background there but then we're still not finished unless you've come to a stage throughout this process that you've really loved. You know, you can definitely stop there. You don't have to go all the way through. But I thought another nice thing to do would be to show you how to use your Nouveau Glitter Marker um, in, a, in a different kind of way. So you can actually ink blend with a Nouveau Glitter Marker. Now, I probably wouldn't recommend using your brush because you kind of want this to be reserved for ink blending rather than something that's got glitter in it. So I've gone back to one of these little Nouveau sponges and we've definitely had these in kits before. If not, you can buy a box of four of them or any kind of sponge that you have would work in a similar way. And then we're going to take our Golden Honey Glitter Marker, shake it up. Your one you will need to prime, but to prime it, you shake it up like that, you press it down like so until you notice that some ink is running out and then you lift it up and you would see that the nib has become coloured. So yours will come with like a cream kind of nib and then it will become coloured as you kind of prime it. But we actually want this blobbiness. So we're kind of getting extra ink out of our Nouveau Glitter Marker by holding it down as you would if you were priming it originally. Um, but if you don't have many glitter markers and you don't want to maybe waste some of the ink out of your glitter marker, um, the sparkle sprays are a very similar consistency. So if you had a sparkle spray, you could just tip some of your sparkle spray out and use it in this capacity. But I know some people have got quite a collection of glitter markers and they don't always know what to do with them. So I thought this would be another way of showing you a different technique. And then for this, I've got, um, this was a negative from one of the flowers that I was cutting out. So I cut out a bunch of the flowers to use on a card and I had a few left over. But the negative piece, we can actually use 
to create glittery flowers within our background as well so I'm just going to place that on the reason why it's got washi tape around the edge is because the piece of card wasn't very big and I thought if I'm pressing on a sponge I'm going to get it right over the edge and I'll get those harsh lines so all I did was take washi tape run it along and then fold it back on itself so it's not sticky on the back because sometimes washi tape really wants to stick and it's always when you don't want it to stick that it will stick and like rip your background so if you run a piece along fold it underneath and then do that on all four sides you'll get a lovely little stencil with the extra edge pieces on. So we'll place that on, we'll load up our sponge and then you can just pounce it on. You can water this down as well, if you didn't want to use as much ink from your glitter marker you can definitely add a bit of water to this and water it down. But we're also going to use this for another capacity in a second as well. But we can load up our sponge and add a few of these flowers onto our background and it just gives another element to the background but also shows you another use for one of the items in your craft kit which I thought was the most important thing as well. So I think maybe one little portion of one coming up there. Then we have a tiny bit of this left which we can add a bit of water to. And this is one of my favourite ways of using Nouveau Glitter Markers because you can have all of those colours in such a small space because they're just taking up the amount of a pen. But you can mix it with a bit of water and splatter with it. And the great thing about the glitter markers is um, a lot of the time the sparkle in them is like a silvery colour. So you can really get away with altering the colour of these as well. So if you had an aqua flow but you only had this honey coloured marker but you wanted a red or something, you could put a couple of drops of red aqua flow in with your bit of honey glitter marker and it would turn it into a sparkly red kind of splatter as well. Um, or even turn it into a green, possibly even go towards a blue as well. Um, so you really can like alter your glitter markers. They're a really versatile tonic product that I don't think that many people um, you know, tend to reach for that often, but they really are a gorgeous versatile product. So not only can you stencil with them, you can also stamp with them, which I have done on one of my other cards that I'll show you in the unboxing video, but you can also do gorgeous splattering with them as well. And you might not have thought, but you can also splatter with Nouveau glitter drops as well, and we're going to do that next. So I'll just wipe this up so we're not going to get anything in it and then we want to prepare our splatter mixture for our Nouveau drops. Now um, you might not want to use a paintbrush to do this with, I, this isn't how I ruined this paintbrush but it could possibly ruin your paintbrush. I can't remember what I did to ruin this one but I don't know if you can tell but like all the bristles are just like pretty much stuck together in big clumps. I can't remember what I did to it now what medium I was using when I did it um, but I keep this one as a manky paintbrush because if you're using something that is kind of like glue based like um, a Nouveau Glitter Drop it doesn't really matter if whatever you're splattering with has bristles or not you just kind of want something small to sort of tap over the top so it still works for this kind of application so if you've got a manky old paintbrush um, where you've glued all the bristles together somehow um, you can use it for this kind of thing or if you don't want to do that you can use the end of a paintbrush as well you can dip the end in and splatter with the end of the paintbrush you could do it with um, like one of these round embossing tools you could splatter with one of them you can even just pick it up on your palette knife and splat your palette knife as well you might get larger droplets that way but that is another way of doing it so I don't want to tell you to use a paintbrush um, just in case it does ruin your paintbrushes but if you already have one that's on its last legs then you know you might as well use it for this kind of technique so what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze out a well a kind of like an extra large Nouveau drop sized drop onto my mat uh, if I zoom you in a little bit more you'll be able to see that then I'm going to spray a couple of sprays of water my bottle's running out so more than a couple for me but <laughs> just a couple of sprays of water then I would take my palette knife to do this, just mix it. It will go cloudy and that's because um, there is like whatever binder or suspension that that glitter is in within the Nouveau drop. I don't know if you've noticed but when you like make a Nouveau drop from like the, what colour is it called? chocolate fondue colour and actually you can see it in the bottle it's like a cloudy colour but then when it dries it goes clear so we've kind of just emphasised that cloudiness by adding the water to it but it will dry clear when it dries so we can clean off our palette knife now we've got this weird looking mess of um, glittery stuff 
we can actually pick this up with our manky paintbrush and you can splatter this on and it will dry in little blobs that have glitter in them so it kind of looks like splattered glitter particles because the suspension that the glitter is in is clear so you're not really going to see the suspension you're just going to see a sort of circular splatter of um, glitter which I think is a really cool idea so that is that I'll clean this up and then we'll finish off the card okay so here is a dried version of the background it looks slightly different to the one that we just splatted on um, it's, the placement is a little bit different but it will still work for creating this card so if you do do a larger piece of cardstock you can just make sure there's a few focal elements of the brown flowers with the sentiment in the centre and then you can kind of like strategically cut up your background to get them in the positions that you want or you can just be um, leave it to be like completely serendipitous about where something appears on your card you can see those beautiful sparkly flowers on there using the glitter marker and the sponge you can see the glitter marker splatter and you can see the Nouveau Glitter Drop splatter as well. It just looks really interesting and different because it's like little splatters of glitter, which I, I'm not sure how else you would get that kind of look unless you like splatted glue and then just only sprinkled a few grains of glitter into it. I'm not really sure how else you would get that look, but that is what our beautiful background has turned out like. I'm just going to trim this down to size using my tonic guillotine. So I want this to be three and three quarters and then just shorter than my mark up there and then I'm just going to cut down my card blank and check if that's the right size, a little bit shorter. Okay, we've got our card blank and our layer for our card. Then all we need now is our sentiment. So I'm using this set which I mentioned earlier, the Simply Sentiments A6 stamp set, which came out recently, I can't remember which Crate and Craft launch it came out in, but I, I only bought this a couple of weeks ago from the Tonic website, so they should still have it available. Then, uh, oh, the sentiment that I've picked is... Um, so happy for you so it says hello friend so happy for you as the kind of sentiment and I'm going to use we could definitely use the brown ink from the kit but because we've already got brown elements on here and I'm going to add some of the chocolate fondue um, nouveau glitter drops which is a darker brown I want to go with that darker brown for the sentiment so it stands out nicely so I'm actually going to use pine cone versafine clair um, to stamp my sentiment in so I'm going with the nice deep dark brown and we can stamp our sentiment and then I'll do what I usually do take my long bladed pair of scissors and just snip it into a little banner shape and then we're going to mat it onto some of the majestic gold pearlescent cardstock as well just to help it stand out a little bit so to mat it onto the cardstock I just take my little sentiment, I tend to use glue unless it's wider and I can fit um, the 6mm double sided tape on the back of it but I tend to just use glue and then we'll place that down there. You want to be a little bit careful when you've only just stamped your sentiment with a pigment ink because if you press it down with your fingers and get an impression of the wet ink on your fingers and then you press it again you're going to like double up your stamping so if you just use a bit of scrap card Okay, now I say that, it didn't even transfer at all, but sometimes the ink can transfer. And it's always when you're trying to um, keep something really crisp and like pristine looking, it's always the, the times when you do that, that you end up getting like a, a, a fingerprint on top of something from touching some wet ink when you've stamped a sentiment. So I'm just going to trim around the edge of this. And last side... So we've got our little so happy for you sentiment with a little bit of majestic gold around the edge. Then I want to stick my background onto my card blank just with some tissue tape. And finally we will finish off with some of our chocolate fondue nouveau glitter drops. 
So I like to do five little gems or Nouveau drops and I like to do varying sizes as well. And so with your Nouveau drops it's perfect because you can vary the size by squeezing out different amounts of the drops. Now when you're going to use your Nouveau drops I would recommend shaking the bottle so that it comes further down into the nozzle ready for you and tries it sort of tries to eliminate some of the um, air bubbles that could be in there. Um, then you want to just do like a practice piece on a scrap bit just to make sure it's coming out nicely and it's not going to like splatter and then you just squeeze more for the larger drops and squeeze out a little bit less as you want the smaller drops as well and then this will tie in absolutely perfectly with the little speckles of brown glitter in the background and it's a really nice deep dark brown to go with that sentiment as well so I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial video showing you how you can create your own sort of mask or stencil sort of design from your dies in your tonic craft kit or any dies that you have will work beautifully for things like this. What about um, a poinsettia or something or just any flower that has beautiful intricate details on it. Um, I think one that cuts out is really lovely but you can also do it with ones the dies that like cut into the card as well. Um, they also give beautiful results, would give you more of a stenciled kind of effect whereas this is more of a masked kind of effect. Um, but anything you have in your stash um, would probably work for this kind of idea um, and you know it just gives a really beautiful result. Or if you do get hold of Tonic Craft Kit 63 it just gives you a different way of how you might like to use some of the elements from the kit, how, how you might like to use some of the inks from the kit, some of the stamps. I mean I've used quite a lot of the different elements. We've got a few new items with the ink pads, the drops and the glitter marker. Um, we've used the blending brush as well to show you how to use that. Um, yeah so I think you've got a pretty good little bit of inspiration here of one way of using the items from the Tonic Craft Kit. So really hope you enjoyed the video, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye!